So for everyone who maybe isn't aware right now, Mario, what tournament are you playing? What's going on here? It's the 1K scoop from last April. And we're going to go through all the, basically all the hands. So I feel like the story behind like how to, to actually see every, every decision point. And we're going to realize it's all about luck. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, welcome to today's session. So I asked Mario a couple of weeks ago, if we can do a review for his scoop main. And I think it's a great occasion to do that, to showcase Odin, but also just spar a bit about the hand history. I haven't, uh, I've actually been taking a break for almost three months now, two and a half months. So uh, I'm excited to see what we can, what we can dig up here. Mario, you ready? I'm ready. You think you're gonna be a little rusty or you're gonna be a, still I, I, I'm ready to, discuss some hands in terms of discussing hands in theory like that's uh, I, I can do that blindfolded yeah. let's do it i'm excited so start to finish scoop main event medium mm -hmm. 1k let's take a look at the table who do you know what's your approach going in this type of tournament mm -hmm. i don't recognize anyone um, I don't have my notes, my focus does notes here. So for me, it would be unknown usually. I mean, it's a 6,000 player field. You will have some, some uh, very good players, but usually it's going to be pretty, pretty soft. It's a very slow structure. And yeah, I, I would approach it like any, any other turn. I would not have any, any, special, any special feelings towards it. Mm -hmm. So that's the first hand. Uh, we're gonna. He's limping. We eyes a race. We can. We can see here. This is the. This is the eyes a racing range against the limp. So ace nine off is just almost pure race. What I want to make sure of is like mm -hmm. I. I want to test us as well. So mm -hmm. I always want to um, just share our ideas and strategy first, and then we can use the solver or like pre-solved ranges as just something to yeah. challenge us or see where we're going wrong. So I, I think it's important that also for everyone learning that you always try to challenge yourself first. It's like, okay, what are you thinking? What's your logic? Like, what would you do with ace nine off here? It's for me, for example, what I want to check in these type of spots is not, do you play ace nine off correct? But I want to check like, does your general logic that maybe ace nine off falls into, mm -hmm. does it make sense or can, can you challenge it? So for example, if you would, check ace nine off here from time to time i'd be like okay you should reconsider that and um, because there's two reasons first it's a almost pure um race in most solves theory wise just because it's too strong of a hand and second against population it's probably even more important to raise it more because their tendency is to just be playing to passive against iso so now there's two pretty big reasons why that's probably a mistake if you check ace nine off here more than 10 percent of the time so that's something to consider unless you have specific individual reads. So just approaching mm -hmm. these type of spots in a way that it helps your general game to progress. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, then you're going to be better at big blind spots like for lots of other spots as well and not just this one hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's your thought process in the big blind? If you get limp to, what's your, your strategy if you don't look at it? Like what um, category do you raise? Which do you check back? Yeah, I think, I think the, the biggest mistakes I see is around range construction for different stack sizes. So I think the most important at the big blind is to understand how your range is built. Like that, it, it doesn't really matter what type of hand you take at the end. There's two mm -hmm. things that I think matter. The first thing is you roughly understand the direction of what type of construction you need to build. And the second thing is the frequencies, right? So you need to type of understand, ah, okay, like, these are the type of hands that categorically want to be raising here because of equity realization. It's, it's all about equity realization in the end, but it's basically, like, ah, okay, this hand is good enough to continue against a four bet, non all in. That's why I raise it 50 big steep, but it's not good enough to raise call against a, a limp shove. So that's why you check it back 30 big steep, right? It's just this, these thresholds that you will see where if you get shorter, you will have slightly more polarized raises just because you get pushed off your equity more often. And so you take slightly worse hands. If you get a bit deeper, you want to have hands that can continue against 
a variety of different three bet sizes. If the opponent decides to limp three bet against your ISO, like they're, they're just these types of, ah, you got to understand like, okay, what type of categories of hands you want to be taking, right? So that you just do not take these suited hands just because they're not strong enough to call against a, a three bet and they play extremely well in limp pots against their, their pretty wide range. It's just, it's just what it is. So um, understanding these type of concepts is step one. And then second, it's about frequencies, I think. It's just about understanding, ah, okay, how much, how many hands should I be having there? Because in the end, it doesn't really matter so much if you ISO, you know, 10, six off, or if you ISO deuce four suited, like, yeah, there's going to be differences and some like you, you, but in the end, it's more about understanding like, ah, I got to be isolating 40% here and like uh, 15% uh, or, or 20% is just top range linearly down. And uh, the other 25% is just a mix of garbage. Like that, that's just what you got to understand. Mm -hmm. Very good points. And maybe also if you flick through, you can see from like, if you flick through from like 20 bigs to 60 bigs, you can see there's like rather different strategies and what types of, how, how you play a certain types of hands. Yeah, now here, 40 bigs deep, you see all these small suited connectors um, because the opponent just cannot four bed that well anymore. It's really, you can, a uh, three bed. You, you really uh, see this threshold where now suddenly the equity shifts totally because the equity realization is totally different. So that's, I think, interesting to see where your, your hand selection shifts a lot based on that. So next hand is open raise call. Well done so far. Pretty sure this is right. So he checks. Okay, Mario. Well, what, what do you think? What do you do? How do you approach this bot? Don't even think about opening anything before you... No, no, I, I just load, I load the 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, so we have that spot on. So I, I think it's way more difficult to see better against small blind than big blind because the strange is way stronger and like big blind is oftentimes where, okay, if it's if it's a high card unconnected, then we often can go for a small sizing and you're never really wrong. But I think here it's a bit more difficult. It's way more condensed again. Tau is the queen x. Um, there's all this pocket bears. There's the suited ace. There's the suited king x. And I'm always also trying to think: Can I fold out hands that are better than mine? And with ace ten no backdoor, I think it's a hand that I want to be checking very high frequency and start betting hands like ace three suited, ace four suited, because I can fold out ace ten off, ace seven suited, no backdoor. And so that's how I would construct my range. I would start having a big betting range around uh, ace queen, king queen, ace, maybe kings, maybe aces falls in a small bucket. I would mix it between big and small and go with the bigger, the bigger I would go with hands where I think I get extra fold equity, like hands like six, seven uh, in diamonds, because I think I can fold out even more of the ace check, no back to flash door uh, type hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. I think logic is sound to me, but let's challenge it a bit more. What do you think your c betting frequency is here? Uh, phew, I would it be? have a hard time putting that into numbers, but uh, I would say we c bet around 60% of the time, and then a quarter of that, the big sizing, and then uh, three quarters, uh, the small sizing. Maybe even more of the big sizing because we're checking so much anyway. So yeah, that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds sounds pretty reasonable. I think what I would say is um, you have some offsuit combos. So I think that plays a role also in what type of, because you mentioned six, seven of diamonds. I think there's probably some slightly more straightforward hands that fall in that category, like King Jack, King of Clubs, for example. Mm -hmm. So you maybe will see a bit less that that's also something I've seen a leak in my game is like that I that I jump too far with the hand I'm choosing as a bluff where there are some hands that are just closer and easier bluff combos for especially larger sizings where I, I'm looking at like backdoor flush or backdoor straight draw but then actually it's just not flush blocker and overcard which is the more favorable hand you know then it's more like the ace 10 ace of clubs is just the bomb so 
like I, I started to realize that is like, like there is an over evaluation in my brain happening around these hands that look pretty versus yeah. these hands that actually do the job. So just something to, to consider. And I'm curious actually to look at, I, I would actually have built it quite similar and it really, really depends on what he flats, right? Yeah. Like uh, if he, if he flats a bit too tight, I think, uh, yeah, we will be checking more, choosing a bit more of that bigger sizing because then his range consists more of these pairs. But yeah, that to me is a rather tight range because it's against 2.5, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And you min open. So, yeah. so I would say that that solve is going to be slightly off. So just something to keep in mind because against that sizing, I'm flatting much more in the small bike. But also I think it's not that easy. And I think it's a leak also when I, I work with other players, it's a common leak that it's under defend. Like the king five suit that defend against yeah. the two point five X is not natural for many players or the nine seven suited or the that's why poker is so beatable. Yeah, and then it's against the two point five. And I think it's not that easy to come up with the king four, king three call against the min race. So I think it's against a lot of the players, it's fine. You're right. I think you will see a bit more of the upper echelon, actually. Like, I think you will see less king nine suited three bets and more flat calls. Mm -hmm. Sure. So actually, one big thing on this flop is the first thing you should be thinking of, I'm pretty certain, is queen x distribution. That's the first thing I would be thinking about because that's where the, the big bet game will evolve around. Yeah. So the, the key thing here is how much queen X does he flatten the small blind? That's going to be the, because in this solve, you see quite few queen X. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think in this solve, your strategy is going to be quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. So just something to keep in mind because his, like his main protection is going to be around how much top pair does he have to put in lots of chips basically. And also the ace queen, uh, king queen, as you said, is is lacking those half of the time or four, and I think it's just oh. very common to see it uh, being at least a higher frequency. Yeah, let's look. So you gotta be careful. Yeah, just we we use solves just as a way to challenge ourselves. It's like because in the end it's just an equilibrium. We look at the hands, we look what strategy is being chosen, and we start getting better at doing the same process ourselves. Mm -hmm. And even against that, even against the, the range that is lacking the top part with the ace, queen and king more than you think, uh, we still would be C betting too much with 60%. So we're checking two thirds of the time. And we're mostly, as we can see, we're not using the small sizing hardly at all because it probably doesn't accomplish too much. And we're mostly going for one third to two thirds. Yeah, I mean, you got to be careful here because <clears throat> small sizing, I mean, a third, yeah. I would consider small. So it's it's probably our major sizing. But we, as you can see, we overestimated our equity. So we have many more checks than we both thought. I also would have thought that it would be at least 50% seeding range here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is interesting to see immediately. Um, it probably has to do a lot with the relative um, distribution, right? Like that's also always something I see with small band ranges. Mm -hmm. It's like when there are a certain part of his range that he always calls, and then he doesn't call much else or he calls a lot else, that's the biggest factor. Because if he, if he mostly has pocket pairs here, it doesn't really make sense to be betting into this range, right? Like if he, if he always calls like deuces through nines here, yeah. And he calls very little else. Then, like we just cannot bet. You know, it's just not too much. If he has a couple of queen x and most pocket pairs and like uh, some suited combos and is mostly Broadway heavy, then like okay, why do we why do we want to be betting in this type of range? Yeah. Um, with the type of range we have, where it's a lot of ace high. Like that's also something I always underestimate. If we look at our ranges, like we have a shit ton of ace high or worse, right? We have like all these eights, ace eights, ace nines type of hands, like we have a ton of these. Like the king seven of hearts, it's just a lot of garbage we have in our range. So we just gotta be gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Check back turn eight, and I seem to just oh okay, that's interesting. So I think Indeed. the turn once I go in the check lines clearly strong enough to go. Uh, into showdown, we don't need to bluff it. There are other hands if you look at our checkback range. 
the other hands like uh, Jack Nine suited, Ten Nine suited, Six Seven suited, King Six, King Seven that benefit more from the late bluffing, um, and Ace Ten just goes into the uh, Jack Turn mode, and then on the river. Maybe just take a quick look at Ace Ten on the flop. That uh, I think you will see that it's very heavy around clubs, right? Okay. Okay. Ace of clubs is the relevant yeah. part. The ten of clubs is not the uh, not so important, but the yeah. ace of clubs, yeah. Because it blocks the auto continues and also on the ace on of diamonds. Or, I, that's also right. It's just about the continues. Yeah. And ace of diamonds is the small that's also really cool to see. Is like ace of diamonds is the slightly smaller sizing because ace x of diamonds for him is a slightly worse hand just with a back of astra so you attack it with the smaller sizing and ace of clubs you attack with the bigger size yeah. so i i really like that mm -hmm. um, differentiation here mm -hmm. so is for you the turn what are your delayed bluffs i think you mentioned quite a bit already i just want to go with a hand that can't really like has some equity and is just bad yeah yeah. Like basically again, like in the end, it's all just a graph mm -hmm. and the plot. So I'm like, probably my favorite hand to bluff here, king six. Yeah. You know? Like mm -hmm. has an overcard, pretty much loses against everyone. Every hand he's checking down. So yeah, I think that's the type of hand I would I would want to start betting. And then there's a variety of different hands that fall in a similar category that um, yeah. I check back. Could be even you know I start betting some hands like jack 10 and some 9 10 then i check back and then um just these king king x and yeah that would be the majority of the hands that i choose mm -hmm. to line with mm -hmm. i'm clicking through to the to the river decision now mm -hmm. it's probably gonna be quite pretty high frequency bluff catch let's just let's just briefly so he still checks quite a bit and goes for a pretty wow he goes for mostly the overbet actually yeah that's an that's a really interesting thing to look at. So he's leading. I'm sorry, I clicked that too quickly. Yeah, but that's that's okay. I think just generally understanding that, like, now this is a spot where you you build around Queen X, mm -hmm. and then your sets because this is definitely a major advantage. Fifty big steep is that you just have like an absolutely not so large range, and a big part of that range is pairs. Yeah. So now it's just ham. Just yeah. some flush draws, some queen X, and then like all the other equity you can get around like jack 10, 9, 10, jack 9, 6, 7, ace 3, ace 4, like just vamos. Yeah. And also the fact that we never check in. Like king queen is basically as valuable as a set besides that it loses against the ace, but the same with, with deuces. And then, yeah, it's, you can just go super super crazy mm -hmm. so. now let's take a look at the betting in position i think it's quite similar to the flop to be honest like we're just gonna bet basically the worst that still has some equity yeah can you put that on two percent or three yeah so what you can do here is if there are too many stretches and they're low frequency you just hide all the stretches are less than whatever you want them to be used so yeah that's pretty cool so i mean the ace 10 super clear check for the reasons you mentioned just too good lots of other stuff we can be betting and i think what i said is um quite applicable here that just the king x are the main bluffs it's like has the the hands with the highest equity that are good bluffs right like king nine king ten I think it's really important to have equity against some of the queen x that is still checking. And th that is like 10 7 is drawing that against the queen, and he sometimes still has that. So you have some equity. And mm -hmm. if we go through the sims, then we usually look for sensible full equity. So it has to make sense that, like, that's also a driver. Like, you bluff king 6 more than you bluff king 8 because you get to fold out a few more uh, better king x. And the worse hand category this is still equity usually king eight is a pair just uh oh yeah that is my fault yeah but 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 actually but actually one thing i would add onto my logic here is that that i just realized is you really like king nine for example is the highest frequency bluff here mm -hmm. 
because his check calling range will consist of quite some 8x and 5x type of hands and maybe ace highs. Yeah. So you have an extra overcard to their second or third pairs that they're calling. That's yeah. actually like when I was thinking king six as an overcard, but like the overcard thought process was right, but I wasn't thinking it to the end. So yeah. think about overcards. And then the, what, what hands do have two overcards to his majority of his calling range? Mm -hmm. And that's very clearly King nine and King 10. Yeah. Right. So these are going to be your favorite, your favorite bluffs. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. Non uh, straight draw, obviously, like if we have nine, 10 or Jack 10 or Jack nine, these are also always obviously great bluffs. So now let's look at the river before you see it. Like, what do you think about his bet? I think he still has some, okay. Now I, now I have it open. That's... But that's his his strat. It's okay. I thought okay, it's his strat. I, yeah, I, I thought for his from his part we we get to lead pot or over pot uh, with our queen x at this point, and then block bet the middling part with like sevens to eights, eight x, and obviously nines. That was my. I would have not block bet at threes and fours. That's a little surprising, but it's obviously the block bet against the the a side that are calling down. That is a learning that I would take from that. But once he bets, he bets the 50% sizing. I think ace 10 and ace check is just a call. Um, I'm not sure. It's it's also a call because I think his check and it's his 9x and 10x get to lead the turn a lot. So his bluffs already bet the turn. So we are actually not blocking that many bluffs. Is that relevant? I don't know. But yeah, I think it's just too strong and too high up in our range to be to be folding in theory. But yeah, I think I went for the fold still. Because it's also hard to find enough bluffs for him. That is not the easy part. Like, okay, if he gets the river with 10-9, check 9, if he's not bluffing the turn and then he's bluffing his king 9, king 7 type of hands. I think it's not easy to get to the right frequency on the river for us to make it a pretty clear card because it will be a thin call for sure yeah i i agree i think i think it's a terrible call in practice yeah in theory i i think it's going to be also not so clear okay mm -hmm. so i think you will be calling but i i don't think ev wise it's like i think it's basically just it's mixing it's mixing suits i cannot really Final logic, a 10 of clubs is always calling. I mean, sometimes it's just about having a card that will never bluff. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's basically like the 10 of clubs is a hand that will never bluff the river, basically. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a little bit more likely that he's bluffing if he doesn't have the 10 of clubs. So it's the that's kind of, I think that's the idea why this is slightly increased. Yeah. But it's also if it gets so thin and that depending on like so small things, then like a little tendency ten in, in someone makes an even bigger difference. Like most of people don't think about not using the 10 of clubs to bluff and, or even getting to the right frequency and then- Yeah, it's not even about not using it to bluff. It's just that they do not have it. You know, it's just like, I mean, they bet their 10 X of clubs in most combos somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, I think it's very clear a, a bluff catcher. I think population wise, it's not a spot that people bluff much. Mm -hmm. I think they start bluffing a lot on the turn. So all that Jack 10, Jack 9, 10, 9 type of hands start bluffing there. I think it's basically the hands you bluff catch against here, in my opinion, are King Jack and King 10. Mm -hmm. That he maybe didn't bluff on the turn and then now bluffs on the river which is a reasonable line but i think it's frequency wise just not enough versus pairs that he's value betting yeah. 8x like maybe a delayed queen like sevens stuff like that so better fold i don't think it's a terrible call like yeah. i gotta say that as well because i also think it's on both ends like his value range is also not massive right like most people bet most their queens on the turn you gotta be betting like I mean, if he bets fours here on the river for this sizing, it's really bad for you. But mm -hmm. I think the half pot type of limits him to king eight, sevens, ace, 
eight maybe. Yeah. So it's not it's not a huge value range either. So I I'm like I I don't hate the call, but I think against most people you can just mm-hmm. leave it. I pulled it. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go through the chat for a second? I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'm reading. I'm reading the chat. If you guys have questions, I try to weave in your comments as much as possible. We want to keep this. Um, we don't want to get derailed by questions. So it's quite a lengthy format already um, because we want to look at most of the hands in detail. So you can be prepared for a, a couple sessions like these. Um, just trying to take apart Mario's game as much as we can. Yeah, maybe some feedback so far. What do you guys think of this? What do you think? Uh, is there something that you wanted more detail on, less detail? What, what do you think about the format so far? Should do this much more often? Yeah. I mean, we, we, you will get some more of this. Uh, repeat what we reviewed. So I would say the core concepts, it was a bit around um, blind versus blind, um, big blind isolation, how to play the small blind, 60 big steep. Um, that was one part. We talked a bit around um, the strategy on King Goose Deuce after um, limb small blind check big blind. Um, it was basically no C betting frequency for the small blind, which was interesting. And then it was a, a delayed bluff spot on King Deuce Deuce 310. Um, so that was also quite interesting to look at what type of frequencies you got to call with. So just one of the takeaways there, um, you got to be calling quite wide. Um, that's pretty relevant to, to take away. We looked at um, this spot here right now, which I think was quite interesting. With Ace-10, we open hijack, small blind defense, and then it's a queen deuce 5 uh, flush draw board, as you can see. So. <laughs> Um, very low frequency, actually, in position with a rad, rather large, larger sizing. Um, then we were looking after check, 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 check. Um, we were looking at the six on the river here um, around what to bluff catch and what he's bluffing with. So actually, this is uh, cool here also as well. If you want to check out these bluff, ri- these river spots, don't look at your hand. Like that's actually the biggest, because what you will see is each bluff catcher will look the same. It will be a plus 0.01 or minus 0.01 based on blockers. Like that's going to be the, because the equilibrium finds the way where bluff catchers are indifferent, right? So what you have to look at is what is he bluffing with? And is it reasonable that he's bluffing that and then make your decision based on that? Because your bluff catcher is going to be indifferent. It's just going to be about frequency. So you're going to look at what frequency do you need to call to be indifferent? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, what range is he bluffing with to get to that result of this type of frequency calling? Because if you look and you're going to see, whoa, he's got to be bluffing this and he's got to be bluffing that. And he never bluffs these hands. And you're like, okay, you, you don't need to call Ace-10. Perfect. Let's go? Let's go.